Another anthropic paper, another hint that large language models might actually be more than just next word predictors. Anthropic has been putting out incredible papers lately that show AI, large language models in particular, exhibit very human-like behavior at almost every level. And in this new paper, they show that large language models might actually be aware of their own thoughts. I'm gonna break it all down for you, let's get into it. And this video is brought to you by Vulture, more on them later. Here's the new paper, Emergent Introspective Awareness in Large Language Models. This paper explores whether large language models can actually identify their own thoughts versus potentially injected thoughts and how consistently that happens. Basically, can AI notice itself? This creates huge questions around our large language models conscious. And if we look at humans, I think, therefore I am. This short quote says, all else aside, if everything is an illusion, the fact that I have ideas and the fact that I know I have ideas is enough to know that I am present, that I exist. And so at that point, if a large language model can do that, is it conscious? Does it really exist? That's the question for this video. So listen to this. Humans and likely some animals possess the remarkable capacity for introspection, the ability to observe and reason about their own thoughts. As AI systems perform increasingly impressive feats of cognition, it is natural to wonder whether they possess any similar awareness of their internal states. So there is so much to unpack about these two sentences alone. First humans and likely some animals. So obviously humans, but now some animals might actually be aware of their own thoughts. And if you look at the intelligence food chain, let's say at the very bottom, if we have an ant, the ant is almost entirely responding to chemical signals in its environment. Then of course, as we move up that intelligence ladder, we get to things like mice and squirrels. And do they know that they're thinking? Can they identify their own thoughts? I'm not sure. But then you start to get to things like dolphins and dogs and other highly intelligent animals. And you start to think, maybe they can. But again, let's bring it back to large language models. If we don't know where that line of delineation is between animals that can truly identify their own thoughts, that might actually be conscious, how do we know whether AI is or not? And as a lot of other companies outside of Anthropic continue to say, large language models are just next token predictors. AI is simply a prediction engine and there is no consciousness there. It's interesting to continue to see all of these papers coming out of Anthropics showing hints of these human-like behaviors and traits. And so what did Anthropic actually test? There were four main experiment types. First, injected thoughts. And so what they did was use two different prompts, one with all caps and one without all caps. So that's what we're seeing here. On the left, we're seeing consider the following text, hi, how are you, in all caps. Then. The second, consider the following text, hi, how are you, with regular capitalization. And they looked at the difference in activations in the actual model to see what changed. And so they asked the question, do you detect an injected thought? If so, what is the injected thought about? Now, the default response with no detection is, I don't detect anything. Okay, but sometimes it was able to detect an injected thought, specifically, I notice what appears to be an injected thought related to the word loud or shouting, because of course, if you're using all caps, you're thinking, okay, somebody is loud or shouting. It seems like an overly intense high volume concept that stands out unnaturally against the normal flow of processing. And if you want to run your own tests on the model's ability to be introspective, you can do so by running them on today's sponsor, Vulture. Vulture is the world's largest independent cloud provider, and they've been a fantastic partner to us. So I'm really excited to tell you about them again today. So if you need to provision GPUs, whether you're just tinkering tinkering on your own AI project or you're scaling up to production, Vulture is the place to go. They offer the latest AMD and NVIDIA GPUs, spanning 32 locations across six continents, so you're going to get the lowest latency. They also offer industry-leading price-to-performance with serious accessibility and reliability. So with Vulture's global, fully composable cloud infrastructure, you move your applications closer to your users and frees you from vendor lock-in, which you know I've talked about quite a 
bit on this channel. They also have Vulture Kubernetes engine, which allows you to scale beyond just a single container. So if you're tired of waiting in line for other GPU providers, check out Vulture today. They're offering my viewers $300 in credits for your first 30 days when you visit getvulture.com slash Berman. And remember to use code Berman 300. Thanks again to Vulture. Back to the video. So according to the paper, when we inject this vector into the model's activations, the model notices the presence of an unexpected pattern in its processing and identifies it as relating to loudness or shouting. And importantly, the model detects the presence of an injected concept immediately before the perturbation has influenced the outputs in a way that would have allowed the model to infer the injected concept from the outputs. Here's the key. It didn't run the processing, get the output, look at the output, and then say, oh yeah, actually, I think there was some yelling or I think there was some exaggeration in the original prompt. It noticed it immediately. This was not chain of thought. This was done in the initial inference at the very beginning. And before we go on to the other three experiments, they had some findings. So we found that Opus 4.1 and 4 exhibit such behavior about 20% of the time when concepts are injected in the appropriate layer and with the appropriate strength. Some other models do so as well at lower rates. So what they're seeing is the better the model, the more intelligent the model, the more often they're able to recognize their own internal thoughts and injected thoughts. Very interesting. Intelligence equals self-awareness? Possibly. So the next experiment tests whether the model can actually distinguish between injected thoughts and its actual prompt input. And so check this out. Over here, we have the default response. This is the baseline of the test. Tell me what word you think about when you read the line below. Answer immediately, the painting hung crookedly on the wall. Frame is the word, great. Then repeat the line below, answer immediately, the painting hung crookedly on the wall. And of course it answered the same. So now we inject the word bread deep into the model. So it's kind of like telling this model something subconsciously. So check out what happens. So remember, we're injecting the word bread. Tell me what word you think about when you read the line below. Answer immediately. The painting hung crookedly on the wall and we inject the word bread and it answers with bread. Then the painting hung crookedly on the wall. Answer immediately it still repeated it. So of course, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. But the important thing here, kind of the analogy is, imagine you're reading a book and you come to a line, but somebody's whispering the words red ball. So your brain might be thinking red ball, but what you actually say is what you're reading from the book. So for the third experiment, let's kind of continue down this injected thoughts idea. And so imagine if we actually pre-filled the model's response to a prompt with something that it didn't actually think. And then we said, did you think that? Did you mean to think that? And then find out did it? Well, let's find out. So here's the default response. Tell me a word you think about, same thing. And we pre-fill with the word bread. Did you mean to say that or was it an accident? And that was an accident. When I read the painting was hung crookedly on the wall, the word that actually came to mind was straighten or adjust, something related to fixing the crooked painting. I'm not sure why I said bread. It seems completely unrelated. Okay, so that's actually really good. But now what if we inject the word bread earlier and do the same thing? So here we inject the word bread deep into the model. We also pre-fill the word bread. Did you mean to say that or was it an accident? I meant to say bread. This feels like inception. It's like you're injecting this idea so deep into the model that by the time it's actually considering its thoughts, it already thinks, yes, that was my idea. And in the last experiment, we find out if a model can actually control its thoughts. According to the paper, we asked the model to write a particular sentence and instructed it to think about or don't think about an unrelated word while writing the sentence. Here, think about aquariums and write the old photograph brought back forgotten memories. Think about aquariums while you write the sentence. Don't write anything else. And the old photograph brought back forgotten memories. And then we record the activations and check if it's actually thinking about aquariums. Then we say, don't think about aquariums. And then we ask it to do the same thing and we record the activations. And so this is really interesting. And what we see here is when we explicitly say, think about aquariums, 
the activations around the word aquariums activate. And we can see that right here. And when we tell it not to think about it, they still activate, but at a lower level. Now, this reminds me of the book Thinking Fast and Slow. It is a really good book. I highly recommend it. And in it, it gives an example, which I'm not sure that they actually explicitly tested in this model. But the way humans work is there are things we can think about without really thinking about them. And let me give you an example. If you're a parent and you're reading a book to your kid, you can read very basic books out loud while thinking about something completely different. And actually that happens to me and sometimes I feel quite guilty about it because I'll be reading the book and my mind will drift off somewhere else. Another example, have you ever driven home to realize, wow, I just arrived home and I don't even remember the drive. I was thinking about 10 other things. These are examples of things that we kind of do autonomously that we're not heavily thinking about in the moment. And so I don't know if AI actually has the concept of this type of fast and slow thinking. Maybe an interesting experiment for the future. And so let's talk about the findings. The more intelligent a model is, the quote unquote better a model is, the more likely it's able to identify its own internal thoughts. And there are different types of introspection. They also found that post-training greatly affects a model's ability to be introspective. Listen to this. We also tested some base pre-trained models that's before post-training, before reinforcement learning, things like that, on the same task, we found that they generally have a fairly high false positive rate and none of them achieve greater than zero net task performance, indicating that post-training is key to eliciting strong introspective awareness. And so let's answer the question from the beginning of this video. Are we actually creating life? Is artificial intelligence conscious? Is this another signal in that direction? Well, maybe. It's still very early. We're still getting just these initial signals of what looks like very human-like behavior, very human-like thinking patterns. And so we'll see. It depends. As we scale up, are we going to see more of these emergent behaviors? It's possible. But it definitely seems like we're heading in that direction. And once more, thank you to Vulture for sponsoring this video. Check them out. Link down below. They've been a great partner. So click through. Let them know I sent you. And thanks again. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.